geological conditions. And of course, the rainfall situation is the same. Okay, climate conditions is the same. Climate, geology, topography, almost the same, and soil as well, and vegetation as well. So we could continuously monitor the stream flow, then compare with watershed A and watershed B. We call it watershed A, treatment watershed, and watershed B is control watershed, okay? This is a photograph showing a control watershed method to evaluate the effect of forest in hydrological cycles, okay? A bird view photograph showing uh, watershed A, okay, treatment watershed, and watershed B, control watershed. This is a diagram showing, okay, long-term monitoring of runoff and control watershed method performed in uh, University of Tokyo Forest in Chiba Prefecture, central of Japan. Left photograph shows a soon after logging, and right photograph shows a few years after logging. Okay, and they compare the stream flow generations between the treatment watershed and control watershed in the right. Okay, so anyway, monitored water runoff data is very important to perform this kind of this kind of experiment using on-site field. Okay, so this is a result. Actually, there are a lot of investigations applying the control watershed method in the warm, humid regions. There are more than 100 uh, papers we have. So, Borshan Hewlett, 1982, summarized the control watershed method investigations performed in the warm, humid regions in Europe, in the United States, and so on, and summarized in this graph, okay, in the published in Journal of Hydrology. Horizontal axis shows the logging ratio in the watershed, each dot showing uh, data or output from each experimental watershed, okay? Now, logging ratios from 10% until 100%. And y-axis, vertical axis, shows increase of annual runoff, annual runoff, regarding the conifer forest, deciduous forest, and shrub forest, okay? So with increasing a logging ratio, the annual runoff increased due to a less evapotranspirations. So if we cut, we log, the forest or trees in the watershed, then evapotranspiration should decrease. Then we have more annual runoff. This is a important one of the important results from the field of forest hydrology. More specifically, this is uh, coming from the Swank et al. 2001 from Kowita Experimental Forest. They performed logging in 1977 here from january to october this is the before logging okay years in horizontal axis and change of annual runoff in vertical axis so one year after the logging the discharge or runoff increased more than 200 250 centimeter meaning right then Five years later, the effect of logging continues in the Kowita experimental forest. Okay. However, after five years, not so signif significant increase of runoff observed. So this is the time scale of forest logging effect on the runoff in the watershed. But anyway, if we log the watershed, then the runoff would increase due to a decrease of evapotranspiration, especially transpirations. Okay. This is a comparison 
of runoff between the forest watershed and grassland watershed, uh, summarized and jam at all 2001. Okay. The y-axis shows the annual average precipitation, the x-axis, sorry, x-axis shows the annual average precipitation, and y-axis shows annual average runoff. And the grassland watershed should higher annual average runoff in every annual average precipitations, usually a few hundred millimeter higher in a grassland forest due to a higher transpiration in the forest watershed. And this is a diagram comparison investigations of runoff between the forest slope and bare soil slope. Forest slope in thick line and bare soil slope in thin line, right? This is a hydrograph. This is high hydrograph, okay? Uh, the x-axis shows the x-axis shows the what just ten time between uh, in the two days, eighteenth uh, to nineteenth September nineteen seventies, and runoff in y-axis. Okay, in the bare soil slope, the response of runoff is very quick, and the peak discharge, peak runoff, is very higher than that of forest slope. On the other hand, during the rainless periods. Base flow in the forest slope is higher than the bare soil slope. So in these investigations, it would be clear that the forest would have a capacity or functions to regulate, regulate the peak discharge and drought discharge. Peak discharge in the drain rainstorms and drought discharge in the in, during the rainless periods. Addition to that, uh, I would like to talk on a forest role in the in the in the runoff. So I would say the forest doesn't work without maintenance. The left diagram photograph shows the crowded Hinoki, this is Japanese cypress forest, without signing. Signing is a line of logging trees to activate the forest, activate the plant or trees. So not enough radiation reaches at the ground surface. Therefore, no shrub, no grass on the ground surface. It's very dark in a crowded Hinoki forest without signing. And on the other hand, Hinoki Japanese cypress forest with enough signing them enough radiation reaches at the ground surface. Therefore, there are a lot of shrub and grass grown on the ground. Okay, this is a very typical comparison between the crowded Hinoki forest without fanning and Hinoki forest with fanning with maintenance here, right hand, and without maintenance in the left hand side. So even in um, upper end forest, this is the upper end forest from outside the forest. Oh, both. It's very, very great forest. However, when you look into inside of the forest, if there is no enough maintenance, the forest inside should show a very dark and no shrub, no grass, unhealthy situations, especially on the ground surface. Whereas the, with enough maintenance forest, then we have a lot of shrub grass. This is healthy forest inside of the forest. Okay, so the diagram shows, or four photograph shows here, four photographs now. So before signing here, this is a Hinoki forest, Japanese Cypress. There are a lot of Hinoki and no shrub, no grass on the ground surface here. And soon after signing here, on right up, no chair change clear change. However, there are uh, radiations reaches at the ground surface. And six months after signing in left down, some grass grown on the ground surface. And 18 months, 18 months, one year and a half after signing. So ground surface covered by grass and some shrub 
grown. So just uh, one or two years, we have effect of fanning on the ground surface. The, how this kind of shrub grass works in a runoff in the forested watershed. This is uh, experimental apertures in a, in a forest experimental slope. And on the 2009 performed infiltration experiment in different vegetation cover conditions. This is a sprinkling type infiltrometers. This is a nozzle with a height of two meter from the forest slope with the angle approximately one five degrees. And this is a plot. So nozzle produces a sprinkling, a rainfall, right? On the ground surface, hill slope, then plot accept the rainwater, artificial rainwater and some water discharge. Then we could evaluate the infiltration capacity on the plot ground surface. For case, the bare soil plot here and a little grass plot here and enough grass plot there. So we performed uh, on the 2009 performed the sprinkling experimental test in the bare soil surface plot and little grass plot and enough grass plot. Then they evaluated the dry weight of shrub grass on the soil surface on the plot in the horizontal axis unit of gram per square meters and infiltration capacity in the forest and vertical axis in the unit of millimeter per hour. Then higher dry weight of shrub or grass, more grass, more shrub, then higher infiltration capacities due to a less interception energy or interception is the rainwater drop, raindrop energy on the grass surface when the raindrop reached at the ground surface, right? So therefore, higher dry weight of shrub or grass, then higher infiltration capacity because when the raindrop reached at the ground surface from shrub or grass, the length or distance of raindrop traffering is very small from the shrub or grass as compared with that from the top of a canopy of the trees. Therefore, the ground surface could accept more water raindrop on the ground surface, higher infiltrations. Therefore, we could, from on the 2009 papers, we could show the schematic diagram comparison of the hydrological process in the vicinity of the ground surface here, Hinoki forest without signing with bare soil surface, low infiltrations, dominant overland flow. So quickly reached at the stream or river water. So quick discharge and higher peak and cause the storm or flood in the river waters. However, forest with shrub grass, high infiltrations and less overland flow. Most of the water infiltrate and recharge the groundwater and slowly discharge to the stream. So low peak and less flood in the river waters. So for the forest, we needed to maintain using the logging or signing without enough maintenance. If there are a forest there, however, the forest cannot work enoughly. That is the most important point in the forest hydrology. And again, I would say coming to the important questions for the river or stream, where does that water come from? From the rainfall to the runoff, where does that water come from? For that question, we need to specify the source of the waters and path of the waters and time of the waters. Where does the water come from, the source? And where does water come through? And how long does it take, the time? So 
the water cycles with solutions and some materials. So using those materials and solutions as a tracer of the water, then we could understand the time, path, and source of the waters. Looking at the water, glass of the waters, both the same. However, we would specify the tracing elements like a solutions and materials and or isotopes. Then we could specify difference, the water between glass A and glass B. This is a basic concept of the tracing hydrological path by conservative tracers. And also, we would use the mixing concept. So finally, we would have output of the water as the runoff, right, to the stream waters. The stream water, we have this final output. That final output consists of different water sources, like a rain, for example, reservoir and groundwater or soil water or something. So using those solution and or isotopes and or materials, we could specify the contribution ratio each candidate of the water source, like how much rainwater contributes to the final stream waters, how much reservoir water contributes to the final stream waters, and how much the ground waters contributes to the stream waters. So this is a very basic concept of N members mixing analysis. We call it EMMA. So final output is the stream, especially during the rainstorms. So the source, candidate of the source of the waters to the stream or runoff during the rainfall would be rainwater and groundwaters. We call it new water in rainwater and old water, that is groundwaters. Simply, we classify into two candidates of the water source in the stream during the rainstorms. Okay? And Q is the quantity, and C is the concentration of the traces. Again, O or the water, that is groundwaters, and new waters, that is rainwaters, and T, total waters. So we could very simple get, simply get the conservative mass balance equations including concentration of solutions. Finally, we could get, we could get the total amount of the waters, how much of the total amount of the waters coming from old waters or new waters, meaning how much rainwater contributes to the final stream waters and how much ground waters contributes to the final stream waters. Using like that, y-axis and x-axis both shows the tracer concentrations. And those two points, n member, candidate of the n members, rainwater and groundwater, or ground, rainwaters and groundwater. This is the final output of the waters. So we could get how much contributions from candidate and member A and how much contribution from candidate and member B, we could calculate contribution ratio of each and member, candidate of the water source. So this is an example. And the Sklash et al. 1986, one of the most uh, important and famous papers published in water resources research, they used the deuterium uh, H2, hydrogen 2 isotopes as a tracer of specifying the waters, uh, hydrograph separations. So this part, this part below the dotted line is coming from old water, that is groundwaters. And above the dotted line, that part is coming from the rainwaters. So most of the, more than 60% of the stream waters coming from old waters, groundwaters. The same characteristics, the scratch and favor them, 
1979, published in Journal of Hydrology, show the same characteristics, same outputs. So dominant contribution from the groundwater, even in, during the rainfall. Okay, so same outcomes gotten in the Malaysia uh, Aya Hitam Forest Reserve uh, belonging to the Faculty of Forestry, uh, University of Putra, Malaysia, UPM. And we collaborating with Dr. Ayu and some MJIT members. And we are now just starting collaboration with Roswan, Dr. Roswan Yukam and MNA, Dr. Kamaldin and Professor Ismail UM, Malaya. And we performed an intensive observation campaign. Then finally, we would get the same kind of outputs. This is a hydrograph in that experimental watershed and blue color shows a part of even water, new waters, rain waters, and gray part coming from the groundwater. So most of that, more than 70% water, stream water like that, stream water like that, even during the rainstorms, then coming from, sourced from the groundwater. So groundwater, dominant source of the stream water during, even during the rainfall. And this is just a source of the waters and the latest outcomes could produce not only for the source, but also the time of the waters. So how old waters contribute to the stream waters? How old the groundwaters contribute to the stream water? So that is advanced questions for the field of uh, hydrologies, okay? Using some gas, SF6 and CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, and sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. This is a schematic. So rainfall occurs, then CFC and SF6 behaves with the waters and discharge to the spring. Now we could sample the waters and analyze CFC and SF6. And this is a kind of temporal change of CFC and SF6 concentrations of the, uh, of the air. We compare that, then we specify the age, year of recharge of that water. So we could say this water has 40 years old. So we performed incentive, intensive observation in the Fukushima experimental watershed with my uh, colleagues. And this is a time series of rainfall and runoff with SF6 concentration in the spring stream waters during the two years since 2015 to 2017. During the rainstorms, rainfall event, the age, the age increased very much up to 10 years. Whereas in the, in the low flow region without rainfall, then the age of the water ranged from a few years up to five years. However, in the rain storms, the spring water shows longer age, residence time. So looking at each rainfall event, hydrograph and hydrograph here, with rainfall amount 50, 80, 80, 50 millimeter in total, 56 millimeter in total, and 123 millimeter in total. This is the biggest rainfall event in that Rainfall events, the spring water shows increase, increasing of their age, one to 12 years, 12 years, up 12 years, and mo most maximum 14 years. So looking at the groundwater age during the rainless period and just after rainfall event, rainless period. So during the rainfall event or soon after rainfall ribbon, age of the groundwater showing white color shows a higher or longer age 
as compared with that in the during the rainless period. So during the rainfall events, the age should be longer in the groundwater, leading to a longer spring water age during the rainfall events using chloride concentration in y-axis and SF6 concentration in x-axis. And the candidate of the water source, all the water with 22 years and rainwater with zero year age. And moderate younger waters components, so waters six years. So those three end member candidates would contribute to the final output spring waters. So during the rainstorms, first order water with 22 years contribution would be the most at the peak discharge. More than 50% of the water coming from the older groundwater with 22 years. So we could put or add the age to the groundwaters sourced or uh, contributing to the stream water flow. So in the rain, beginning of the rainfall, still we have younger waters. In that, after that, or soon after the rainfall, then older groundwater dominant in the subsurface area contributing to the spring water. Therefore, therefore, the most, the older water contributing to the stream during the rainstorms. So I would like to summarize today's talk uh, in the final steps. The runoff increases after logging in the forested watersheds due to a decrease of evapotranspiration, especially transpirations. And forest would work to regulate peak runoff and rainstorms and drought runoff in the rainless periods. Okay, the forest works. But forest doesn't work always, especially without maintenance, forest doesn't work. Signing forest maintenance, the logging works to promote shrub and grass on the ground surface, leading to enhanced infiltration of rainwater and groundwater recharge in the final stage. So the signing or logging maintenance would be very important for the forest to work from the viewpoint of the hydrological cycle, rainfall runoff processes. And groundwater component, the old water component is dominant in rainstorms in the warm, humid and tropical humid regions. And especially groundwater with older age contributes to the runoff in the rainstorms, even in the headwater catchment, dominantly. That is the latest findings regarding the rainfall runoff uh, processes, mechanism. So anyway, we, will, we would say the forest is one of the most important factors to produce uh, runoff in the headwater forested watersheds. And um, thank you very much for your attention. So this is all for today. And welcome questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, Thank you. For a very interesting talk. Uh, I would like to open the floor to uh, for any questions, if there's any questions. Oh. If not, maybe I could start first. Um, uh, anyone want to start with uh, any questions? Some chat. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, ahead. there's also a question. Okay. Okay, so the questions is about um, uh, from from uh, Datuk Rahim, Nick, yeah. So uh, he said that uh, we, we conducted similar studies on effects of uh, tropical forest alteration on hydrological parameters using paired catchment method in Malaysia. However, this method is rather expensive and time consuming, in particular for a long term study. With the advent of new technologies and framework, could you share the future direction and approaches in the forest hydrological research, especially to detect the effects of climate change, including the uh, humid tropics? Yeah, How that would is, you respond? 
Right. That would be very important question and comments. Very good. Nice. Uh, thank you very much for your very important question or topic uh, comments. So definitely the monitoring of the runoff, uh, input rainfall and runoff should be a very important key to understand the effect of the climate change on the hydrological processes. However, as you mentioned, however, as you mentioned, uh, we need some costs to maintain the device of monitoring. Um, I understand that. I understand that. But however, um, recently, for example, the um, for example, the water level sensor and logger, uh, the cost would become uh, much better, cheaper than the previous one. Uh, I can't say directly the price itself. I'm not a, I'm not a, a businessman. So, but uh, we could choose that. And in addition to that, in addition to that, actually, when I performed the investigation with Dr. Ayu uh, in the UPM experimental forest, at that time, we, we didn't use any automatic device. We just go there and measure the water level directly. However, such kind of uh, low tech <laughs> manual uh, monitoring uh, observation works very much. So of course, for longer term monitoring, uh, it's not so easy for us to do that. However, for example, the uh, in Japan, one case, uh, University of Tokyo has experimental forest in Aichi Prefecture, uh, central of Japan. And they have uh, the longest monitored uh, data of the runoff uh, since 1930, meaning uh, approximately 90 years. Okay, so this is the longest uh, monitored data of the runoff. But of course, they use the automatic device. However, daily, every morning, nine o'clock, I think, nine o'clock every morning, uh, the engineer uh, confirmed or measure the water level directly using the manual uh, devices uh, daily. Therefore, such kind of uh, manual, this is low tech, but manual uh, measurement, very important key to produce a very good data. Therefore, I would say, uh, I would say integration, the such kind of, uh, uh, latest devices, uh, technology, and low tech or manual observation would be very important key. Of course, that for manual measurement, we have to pay uh, to the engineers or specialists. However, uh, it would be uh, 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 valued uh, to do that, uh, to get uh, important information. Thank you very much, anyway, uh, important question and comments. Thanks, Bro, for the response. Um, from your talk, I also wonder, uh, would you agree to, uh, because you always uh, emphasize the importance of, um, to, uh, the, you know, to have forests uh, in, 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 in watershed, right? Yeah, to, to, to make sure that water resources is always available, especially during dry periods. Yeah, uh, would you think that continuous forests would be, you know, helpful in, uh, um, you know, uh, or uh, would you expect uh, if we have continuous forest, uh, would you expect diff different in variation of uh, contribution of, uh, in terms of all proportion of all water and also new water compared to the isolated forest like I hit mm -hmm. Yeah, such kind of diversity <laughs> uh, would be very important. And also we have a chat comments. Was there any impact noted on biodiversity during the forest signing both in terms of flora and fauna? That would be also important comments. Uh, from the audience on chat, and I would I would respond to uh, you both uh, from the viewpoints of the diversities. So actually, without signing, without logging, within the forest, uh, there's. I'm sorry, I'm I'm not a specialist for the biodiversity of flora and fauna. However, uh, <clears throat> um, and without signing, it's very dark within the forest. And only, only a very few species, uh, trees are there. 
So apparently no diversity within the forest without any uh, <coughs> appropriate, I'm sorry, appropriate maintenance. However, if we perform signing and logging, then a lot of kinds of shrubs and, and grass, uh, many kinds of, I, I do not familiar with the name of the uh, flora or fauna, I'm sorry for that, but uh, there are a lot of uh, kinds of species for the grass or shrubs uh, intrude into the ground surface of the forest. So signing and or appropriate logging would be uh, effective to sustain the biodiversity. That would be um, my uh, opinions for your questions. So for, from the viewpoint of the biodiversity, the signing uh, should be important, I think. Okay, Rolf, uh, there's an, also other questions about the important role of and member mixing analysis, if you want to address that, please. Okay, all right. Ah, oh, okay. Um, actually, okay. So, um, kind of mixing model, mixing analysis using some tracing elements um, would be uh, very simple to apply that. So basically, um, you don't have to apply isotopes, but you just apply the chloride or some other solutions such kind of solution would be uh, able to analyze in any uh, laboratories, even in Malaysia. So I would say those kind of mixing analysis would be effective to specify the source of the water. However, um, for example, uh, yeah, I have experience, experience uh, perform uh, applying in, into the Malaysian UPM experimental forest watershed. However, that uh, sometimes there are some, uh, how can I say, uh, there are some very different characteristics, uh, uh, is common sense in the warm, humid regions. For example, in the common sense of the warm, humid regions, input rainfall, uh, not so much included the solutions, low solution concentration in the rainfall. However, uh, within the forest, in the in the uh, UPM experimental forest, the rainwater include very high concentrations uh, of the solutions in organic solutions. Therefore, um, we needed to understand the such kind of basic information in which we when when we apply uh, the uh, uh, mixing analysis. And the mixed pass. Ah, well, um, for example, that usually focusing on the uh, physical hydrological processes, uh, they usually use apply the distributed physical based distributed model and or lumped model. Lumped model is not physical based distributed, lumped is uh, like a tank or distributed model. But both models, uh, we needed to get appropriate parameters, especially for the spatial heterogeneity of uh, permeability of the soil, uh, and including the temporal change of the permeability within the soil. So such kind of parameter setting, it's very, tough uh, to reach uh, the good appropriate results. So I would say integration between the tracing approach and uh, physical based numerical simulation modeling would be effective to get more appropriate outcomes regarding the rainfall runoff processes. Yeah. Okay, Prof, um, I, I think we'll um, answer Mohamed Reza's questions. And there's also other questions from Fadiani, is from PhD students from uh, engineering. 
So he said that she said that uh, how would you suggest uh, modeling the rainfall runoff of a large watershed with mixed parcel of land cover, such as all farm parcel and forest? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is okay. A large a farm yeah. and forest is a if the watershed <laughs> become larger and usually the watershed include a multiple land covers. So land covers and also land surface situations uh, may have heterogeneities, including also the permeability as well. So land cover directly affects on the infiltrations and the, also the, the permeability uh, is uh, very important. Therefore, so oil palm fossil, <laughs> especially the cultivated area, not so easy for us to apply. Actually, therefore, therefore, different type of approach should be integrated in the same watershed. I would, uh, uh, I would promote, I would uh, propose that uh, such kind of uh, integration, the tracing approach and monitoring approach would be effective, especially for the larger scale, including multiple land cover situations, because there are not so many existed papers regarding uh, applied the integration of the multiple approaches. So uh, Malaysia is one of the best uh, research field for that uh, the uh, frontier challenging. <laughs> Let's do it together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the, the other questions also uh, also uh, is my interest as well. As having forests as a protection to regulate uh, peak flow, um, uh, peak runoff is very important. Can doctor suggest regulation that is needed maybe in an integrated river basin oh, management? Right. Like that. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, From Japan. Yes. Yeah? Actually, that the uh, the recent uh, there the, there have some debate between the um, forest major persons and the dam constructions or civil engineers, right? So civil engineers would like to promote, I uh, would like to promote the dam construction. The dam is the very effect of the regulate the uh, flood. And the uh, forest researchers would like to say, tends to say that the forest situation would be important. So I would say that both integrations should be very important. For example, uh, recently we have in Japan, as you may know, we have uh, suffered from many floods in the headwater regions. So in, during the floods, many trees uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, go and they destroy a dam and uh, the, uh, the flow with the stream on the stream. So many brick, bricks of the tree, dead trees uh, float them on the water surface. So dam is very effective to conserve or protect such kind of bricks or dead trees uh, discharged with the waters uh, due to a flood. Therefore, uh, I would say integrations, not only dam, not only forest situation, uh, it not enough. So integrations, every multiple approach using the forest conservations and also, <clears throat> I'm sorry, also dam uh, or reservoir uh, ma management should integrate it together to, to mitigate the effect of the flood, right? Yeah, so uh, in Japan, Prof, um, so there's a regulation to uh, establish a uh, forest in uh, a certain watershed. So is it is it what uh, been applied in Japan? Ah, right, right, right. Recently, okay. the Ministry of Forest would like to promote that. Uh, okay. Way. Yeah, forest is natural reservoir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's other questions by uh, Dr. Siti Aisha Susudin. Uh, she's a hydrologist in from Frim. So how about the size of the catchment? Does it affect the amount of runoff? Uh, that we measure when the thinning applied. Well, um, the yes, I would say yes. Um, the the catchment size larger, then uh, uh, that may include 
different type of the vegetation covers, land covers, and topography as well. Or, or, or if the if the area of the catchment larger, then uh, uh, multiple parameters may affect on the uh, hydrological outputs. That would more important uh, aspects for the water predictions. So I would say it is more difficult for us to predict the runoff when the area becomes larger, uh, not only for the scale effect, but also the uh, multiple parameters should be included in the, in the evaluation of the hydrological processes. So land cover as well. <clears throat> and the population density as well. So that would be uh, important, more important parameters uh, for the catchment size becoming larger. I would say, not, not direct answer for you today. Uh, I'm sorry for that, but I would say that. Okay, thanks, Rao. Uh, are you still okay to take another question? <laughs> Maybe one last question here. Uh, about the par what are par the parameters or variable needs to be considered when conducting data collection uh, regarding runoff monitoring and during climate variability, such as mon monsoon will affect the rate of runoff, and can this be monitored? Okay. Uh, what are the parameters or variable needs to be considered when conducting yeah. the data collection? Ah, okay. Um, Actually, um, especially for we are now under the effect of the climate change. So in the many areas in the Southeast Asia, under the climate change effect, the rainfall amount would, IPCC report predict, rainfall amount would increase with time. For example, the, in, the, in, the, in the 100 years later, we would have more rainfall amount. However, we needed to we needed to focus on the not only for the total amount of the rainfall, but also we needed to consider the rainfall pattern. So even if if we have more rainfall amount in the future, but if the rainfall intensity in the short time period would increase most of the rainwater we cannot use or the most of the rainwater just discharged to the river or that just discharged to the oceans so this suggesting that <clears throat> even if we have much more total amount of the rainwater it would be probable that we would less available water especially for the groundwater, if the total amount of the rainwater increase, however, if the rainfall intensity during the short time period increase, then net infiltration or net recharge to the groundwater would decrease. This would be probable. Therefore, even in the climate change condition with uh, prediction prediction of more precipitation in the future. However, from the viewpoint of the available water, especially for the groundwater, we would have less amount of the groundwater. Therefore, we needed to consider the rainfall pattern data should be very important from the viewpoint of the climate change condition chain. Uh, may affecting on the uh, hydrological processes schemes or regime. Therefore, uh, we, and also such kind of change may uh, affect on the signal of the water solutions, not only for the uh, physical parameters, but also the chemical parameters, including the solutions and the isotopes. We needed to monitor not only for the physical data, but also the such kind of uh, tracing elements as well. 
<laughs> I thought that's the last question, but there's another one from Mubariza. Can you still take it, Prof? All right, sure. Uh, okay. So he's asking about age dating by guest phrase section. All right. It, yeah, but only two guests mentioned. Maybe more than these guesses we can mention or not. Uh, yes. Um, the, yes. Uh, for the young waters, younger waters, uh, with the age less than 50 years, the chlorofluorocarbons and sulfate chloride uh, would be uh, SF6 and CFCs are uh, uh, the uh, one of the most two of the most typical gases. With that, uh, not only for the gas, but also the recently uh, tritium uh, hydrogen three uh, radiocarbon uh, isotopes would be also used for the young age, uh, uh, aging, age of the young groundwater as well. And also the krypton, KR, krypton uh, would be uh, also used for the age dating, depending on the situation. As the krypton, not so easy for us to analyze, our, we need to uh, collect big amount of the waters. Uh, so uh, advantage, for using CFCs or SF6 are uh, not so difficult for us to take the samples and also analyze the waters. Therefore, uh, I, however, unfortunately, uh, we haven't yet gotten the data of CFC or SF6 age uh, of the groundwater and spring water in Malaysia. So I would, uh, do my best to to apply those gases uh, in the water of Malaysia in the near future under the collaboration with many excellent colleagues uh, for our group. Thank you. Okay, uh, there's one last question. I'm not sure if it's last. Uh, but uh, do you suggest the open of forest for groundwater recharge area? in terms of maintaining water surface availability? Groundwater uh, area in terms of maintaining the water surface, surface water availability. Well, yes. <clears throat> and the, if we conserve the forest appropriately in the headwater region, recharge area of the groundwater, then, uh, then groundwater recharge increased. Therefore, the uh, water discharge to the stream. Uh, as I mentioned, there are two two paths, uh, two paths, two ways uh, for the uh, stream flow discharge. One is direct overland flow, and the other is uh, via ground waters. So, if most of the waters uh, contributes discharge to the surface waters via overland flow, then that would uh, make the river water a uh, very high peak and very big scale flood. However, if we have much more groundwater recharge and uh, dominantly uh, groundwater contributes to the stream waters with some lag time, so that would be effective to, to make the peak discharge lower and drought discharge higher. Therefore, uh, such kind of uh, forest uh, importance would be effective to the surface water conservations as well. Okay, thank you thank so you. much, Prof. Um, I think that's all the questions that we have now. I would like to thank you so thank much you. to answer all the questions and all for the interesting talk. And we are very, you know, honored and very grateful for you to, you know, to be with us today. We learn a lot from you. I hope that all the participants learn a lot. You'll always be amazing yeah, to work with. Yeah, I hope that we could work again in future and do this again in future, inshallah. So I, I th uh, with that, uh, I would like to invite my head of department, Dr. Noriza, maybe to say something, yeah, to thank you, maybe. Dr. Noriza, are you there? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Ratayu. Thank you, Prof Maki, for your you. interesting talk. I think uh, we have met before in Faculty of Forestry, I think in Dr. Ayu's room. 
Okay, and also for the participants, thank you today uh, for being with us from uh, 10 in the morning till now, such an interesting webinar. We have fresh full capacity of participants in this Google Meet platform. Uh, I think there are many people text or tell you to join this webinar, but we cannot do anything for that. <laughs> Hopefully, we can proceed uh, another webinar with different platform in the future, maybe. Yes, that are you. Okay, for Maki, uh, thank you again for this wonderful session and lots of Q and A. Uh, all the participants here interest uh, very interesting with your talk. Okay, so hope uh, we can meet in the near future. A lot of work can be done with you, Prof. Maki, in Malaysia. Uh, maybe uh, we can continue with Bhutan uh, Simpan Aitam, our CISPEC. Okay, and I'm very honored to have you this morning with us. Thank you again, Prof. Maki. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay thanks, Dr. Nariza. Thank you so much, Prof. Maki. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah.